Hi there. I'm Mike Micklon, the Executive Artistic Director at Johnson Hall right here in beautiful Gardner, Maine. And I'm excited today to bring you a presentation of our Artists in the Schools program. And that is brought to you by great support from the Onion Foundation and E.J. Prescott. And today you are in for a treat because we have the amazing uh, Maine author, Lynn Plord. We hope you enjoy. Hello everybody, I am Lynn Plord, a Maine author, and I'm very proud of being a Maina. You guys are Maine authors too. You live in Maine and you write, so you're Maine authors. I was born in Dexter, Maine, grew up in Skowhegan, Maine, I live in Winthrop, Maine now, so I've always been in Maine, and it's a very important part of who I am as an author. I wanna share with you three different pieces of my writing that have helped me to be a better author. One is characters, and I have written about Mainers, so that's an important part of my writing. I did a picture book biography of Margaret Chase Smith. She's the first woman to run for president in 1964, and she was the longest serving female senator. So I wrote this biography of her, and I want you to see the real lady. There's Margaret Chase Smith. She always wore a rose. That was her signature outfit. I had to have a rose. And then there she is campaigning for president. So she's in a car and she's waving to people and she's hoping they will vote for her. So it can influence my characters. I wrote about Margaret Chase Smith. Someone else I wrote about was in this book, Lost Trail, Nine Days Alone in the Wilderness. It's the only graphic novel that I've ever, comic that I've ever written. And it is about a very famous Mainer. And I'll show you a picture of this famous Mainer. Some people might remember him like this. But this is how he looked as a boy when he was lost in the wilderness around Mount Katahdin. That's Don Fendler. And that's Don Fendler. And he was lost for nine days when he was a 12-year-old boy in the wilderness around Katahdin. And Don Fendler was a friend of mine, so I got to write Lost Trail with him. Another cool picture of Don. There he was after he was safe, and he had the gunny sack that he used to put over him. He found that in an old cabin in the woods to keep the mosquitoes off him. And look how scrawny he was, because all he ate for those nine days was a half cup of wild strawberries. But this is the Don Fendler I know. There I am with Don Fendler, and he passed away a couple years ago at the age of 90, and it's one of the most special friendships I've ever had. And so many people know Don's book, Lost in a Mountain in Maine. And then we did the book, Lost Trail. So influenced me as a character in the book that I wrote about Don's story. But boy, I got a friendship out of it too. And the last example I want to share with you for character is my um, middle grade novel, Maxie's Secrets. It's the only novel I've had published so far. And it's the story of a dog, Maxie, but it's based on my dog, Maggie. So I took my Maggie that we had for almost 14 years and then I wrote a story about her. And it, there's fiction added in it, but she was the springboard. So definitely, even though it's an animal character, it is a character. I also think my writing is influenced by Maine for settings. In my book, At One in a Place Called Maine, it's actually a setting all over Maine, and there's a scene with Katahdin, that's part of Maine. There's a scene by the ocean. There's a scene with the pine trees, because we're the pine tree state. So this book, At One in a Place Called Maine, sort of fits in so many things about Maine. I couldn't write it if I was not a Mainer, and I've woven those all in. This is like my love poem to the state of Maine. Also, I'm back to Maxie's Secrets. The setting helps with that because 
I pretended it was at my house where I live. And so the boy in the story, he's surrounded by woods where he lives. And I made the setting the same as my house where I live, surrounded by woods. So I was able to use setting when I did that book. And then the last example is my book, The First Feud Between the Mountain and the Sea. And that's a story about a fight between Mount Katahdin, which is a main place, a famous one, and the Atlantic Ocean. So uh, Katahdin and the Atlantic are both important parts of Maine, so I included those in my settings. And then my last example is topics. So when you think of Maine, what things do you think about? Moose. So I've had moose in more than one story, but my book Moose, of course, has moose in it. And I also have written a couple of books about black bears because black bears are the only kind of bear that we have in Maine. So baby bears not hibernating. And in my books, it keeps showing up over and over again, seasons. Because when you live in Maine, seasons are a big deal. I've had a couple of fall books published, Wild Child and Bella's Fall Coat. And then I had Summer's Vacation. I've had a bunch of winter stories published um, because winter is a big deal in Maine. So in terms of uh, the topics, the seasons, the, um, the black bears and the moose, those are all things I've written about. What I'd like to do now is share a story with you and it includes characters, settings, and topics. And after I read it, you guys in your classroom can talk about all the main things that you find. And as I share it, I want you to be thinking too about how Maine can influence you as a writer. Hmm, do you, are there characters you could write about? Are there settings, are there special, like do you go to a camp or something? Um, or a vacation where you go each summer or each winter? or uh, topics that you write about. So I'm gonna share with you, happy birthday, Maine. And when I do, man, I bet you could probably find 30 to 50 main things in this book. So you'll have to see if you can. It's sort of a combination of all the main things. Happy Birthday Maine was written because last year, Maine in 2020, Maine turned 200 years old. It was the bicentennial. I wrote the book, Lynn Plourd. Mark Scott Ricketts from Bangor is the illustrator. And Paul Bunyan and a Maine moose throw Maine a birthday party. Hmm, Paul Bunyan, character, <laughs> moose. I'm gonna name, name him a character in there. Happy birthday, Maine. And the chickadee has a balloon. When you're planning a surprise birthday party, you have to be sneaky. Stomp, stomp, clomp, clomp. Stomp, 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 clomp, clomp, clomp. Unless you're Paul Bunyan, unless you're Moose, then it's not easy to tiptoe away to plan a secret party. As Paul Bunyan and Moose reached a clearing deep in the woods, they heard, who, who? Great question, said Moose. Who will we invite to the party? All 1.3 million residents, of course, said Paul Bunyan, plus any people from away who want to come. But how can we possibly send out that many invitations? A sky chock full of chickadees replied, chickadee dee dee, wee wee wee. Uh, that's a big job for such wee creatures. Moose looked skeptical. Paul Bunyan shrugged, chickadees are the state bird. It's the least they can do. And they did. You're invited to a birthday party for Maine. If you're wondering how old the birthday girl is, we're not telling, but she was born in 1820, so you do the math. Date, March 15th, but when you get to be that old, you should celebrate all year long. Time, any time, day or night, where, anywhere, and everywhere, within Maine's 35,385 square miles, of course. Potluck, no gifts, just bring a favorite story to share about the birthday girl. RSVP, ASAP. I wonder if you check the yes or no to go to that party. 
As soon as the invitations arrived, RSVs, RSVPs started pouring in. Aunt, that's a main word for yes. There's six of them. Let's try it together. Say it with your best main voice. Aunt, 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 aunt. It's going to be the biggest party Maine has ever seen, Brag Paul Bunyan, even bigger than me. Yikes, said Moose. We'd better get ready, said Moose. Clomp, clomp, stomp, stomp. Get ready, they did. They decorated the whole state in a festive fashion, including every single pine tree, except the ones that were still decorated from Christmas. They prepared and practiced for competitions and games, including potato sack races, snow sculpting contests, I'm wondering if you're thinking what main thing that is, and antler ring toss, of course. They created costumes for those who wanted to dress up as famous Mainers. Hmm, someone who writes horror stories. Hmm, someone who invented the earmuffs. You guys have to check it out. Everyone else would just go put on their favorite plaids and boots and look where Moose went shopping. A famous main store. Hmm. They bought party favors. Whoopee! Moxie! Whoopee pies? Moxie soda? Their main. At last it was the big day. Surprisingly, there was no stomping, no clomping. Paul Bunyan and Moose were nowhere in sight. But that didn't stop everyone else. No one wanted to miss the party of the century. Or er, the party of two centuries. Toot. It was time to get this party started. Party hats for everyone. Oh, Moose would have looked wicked cute in that hat. Moose and Paul Bunyan are not there. But the whale has a party hat, and the state house in Augusta has a party hat. A Guinness record-setting blueberry pie eating contest. Imagine how many pies Paul Bunyan could have eaten. Blueberries are main. Toboggan sled races from the top of Katahdin all the way down to Portland Headlight. Dump truck loads of mashed potatoes filled in melted, muddy, grassy, grassy spots along the way. Moose and Paul Bunyan would have won this for sure. They're still not there. Everyone enjoyed the giant potluck buffet set up along Route 1, including baked beans, clam chowda, and touche pie. Oh, my. Too bad Moose and Paul Bunyan aren't here to chow down. They work so hard on this party. From the New Hampshire border to Matinicus Island, from Kittery to the county, from the biggest city to the smallest town and everywhere in between, everyone celebrated the way life should be. Maine's party, bon fet. That's happy birthday in French. Let's say bon fet together, bon fet. Everyone celebrated that is except Moose and Paul Bunyan. Chicka dee dee dee, where could they be be be? But there was no more time for wondering. A giant logging truck rumbled to a stop. Partiers surrounded it and ooed and odd. At the world's biggest birthday cake, just as everyone was ready to dive in, the cake top flew off. Happy birthday, Maine. Happy birthday, Maine. Chicka dee dee dee. Tee hee hee hee. And I'll flip to the back. The chickadees cleaning up the party mess. I think that's kind of funny. When you think about this book, could it really happen? Could Paul Bunyan and Moose throw Maine a birthday party? No. It's make-believe. It's thick fiction. But the back of the book has some non-fiction. So I included, it's called The Main Scoop. And Moose says, ooh, I love ice cream. And Paul Bunyan says, not that kind of scoop. So there's main numbers, like how many counties we have and how many people. There's main particulars, like our state motto and our state bird and state dessert. Geography of Maine, Maine people, the first people that lived in Maine, and a list of famous Mainers. You might have heard of some of them, like Abby Burgess or Cornelia Flyrod Crosby or Samantha Smith. She was a kid. So. 
when you guys look at my reading of Happy Birthday, Maine, you could even go through it again and see how many characters you can find, settings, like root one would be a setting, and main um, topics. So um, things that I would include, like the chickadee is a main topic or subject. So, all right, I hope you guys think about how main is part of your writing and use it to help you make better stories. Good luck, authors.